Welcome. So what I have here, ladies and gentlemen, is y equals 3 to the x plus 1 minus 5. And what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this um, exponential growth equation. So when doing this, the first thing I like to do is make sure that I have a correct understanding of the transformations. And I wrote them down. So I write them down as here, since I'm adding a 1 inside the function, that's going to shift my graph two units left. And since I'm subtracting a 5 outside my function, that's going to tell me I'm going to shift my graph 5 units down. OK, so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to graph our parent graph. Now, what I like to the reason why I like to graph the parent graph is because when we have a graph, that parent graph, it's very simple to really kind of graph it. Um, because if we just have y equals b to the x with no transformations, we know that this first point is our y-intercept, which is 0, 1. And then our next point is 1, b. So what that means is if I choose my points of 0 and 1, it's pretty simple to be able to graph a paragraph with no transformations. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph y equals 3 raised to the x. All right? And so by doing that, uh, what I'm going to have now is I'm going to choose a table of values. And again, the table values I'm going to choose are just going to be my easy points, 0 and 1. When I plug in 0 and for 3, I'm going to have to get have 1. And that's going to be true for all of my graphs that are in the form of y equals b to the x. However, when I get to y equals a times b to the x, that is going to alter it a little bit, um, as that's going to be kind of you know, a dilation stretching. Now, if I plug in 1, I am, should get b back. And 3 to the 1 is just going to be 3. So now let's go and plot these two points. So I have 0, 1, and then 1, 3. 1, 2, 3. All right? And then I just go ahead and graph this. Now, what's also nice about graphing this is um, graphing our parent functions, we can kind of take the information from this and be able to apply this to our other equation or to our, other, to our final graph. Because we need to know that our domain is going to be the set of all x values, which is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Our range, in this case, is going to be from 0 to infinity. And our asymptote, where our, the line that our graph is going to approach, is going to be at y equals 0. All right, so we have a table of values of 0, 1, and 1, 3. And a lot of times what I like to do um, when looking at this is you can look at this graphically if you like. But I like looking at the table of values and seeing how they change based on the transformations. All right, Because ladies and gentlemen, it says two units left. I'm going to take this graph and shift it over two units to the left. So if I shift this graph two units to the left, instead of being at 0, 2, it's now going to be at negative 2, 0. So really what I'm doing is I'm subtracting two units from the x values. So therefore, my new table should include the points negative 2 and negative 1 for the x coordinates. Then it says, shift my graph 5 units down. Well, if I take 0, 1 and shift it 5 units down, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? So now it's going to have a coordinate point of 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, comma, negative 4. So all I'm really going to do then is subtract 5 from each of these points. So therefore, creating a new table of values, x, y, now my new table of values are now going to be negative 2, negative 1, negative 4, and negative 2. And now I can just plot those, and then I just need to determine the domain range and asymptotes. So when graphing this here, I'll go to negative 2, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and negative 1 down 2. Die. OK. Um, and then the next thing you need to remember, also we have an asymptote at y equals 0. Well, if I shift this graph down 5 units, that means my asymptote has now moved down 5 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I have this nice little dotted line at 0, 5. And now what I'm simply going to do is now just connect this to go through. But changing my asymptote is going to affect now not only the asymptote, is now I can say my asymptote has now been shifted down 5 units, so it's now y equals negative 5. It's not going to affect my domain, which is the, my negative values, which would be from negative infinity to infinity. However, it is going to affect my range, because now my range 
is not just going to be only positive numbers, but now it's going to go all the way down to negative 5. So my range is from negative 5 to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an exponential function with two transformations shifting up or shifting down and shifting to the left. Thanks.